present to you James B. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Progressive Discussions. We will begin sinking our teeth into these readings right now. Uh, the beginning of January. Very warm outside, but it's going to to be uh, colder than a witch's titty mm. tomorrow. Yep. Go what are you going to do? Tonight. Climate change. What can you do? The deniers say it doesn't exist, but... No, it doesn't exist. You know, but uh, I will... I'll put on my... Uh, I'll wear my evangelical serpent, as in taking up serpents, you know, out of protest for all the uh, right-wing zealot cultists out there, the religious nuts. Okay, my evangelical serpent. There you go. Oh, speaking of evangelicals, I think Mike Huckabee quit, resigned from the campaign. It's about time. Yeah, maybe he should go and date uh, Kim Davis and bang her. I, um, I'm not certain. I think uh, the next debate is on Tuesday. For Republicans? Yeah, at the uh, Fox Business. I think that's Channel 24 here. In New Jersey. Oh, I'm looking for. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm looking forward to to being. So we'll see how many are left. I'm looking forward to being entertained by Mr. Donald Trump. Hey, hey! He's always good for many laughs. Mr. Trumpy. Capitalism in a conch shell. The conch is back, baby. All Long right. Long live the conch. Huh? Long live the conch. Long live the conch. Seek Heil. Seek conch. Seek conch. Seek conk. <laughs> hey, oh, I added a very strong to my Blackthorn Shillelagh importer from Ireland, weapons grade. It looks like it could hang somebody. I added a very strong polypropylene cord. You know how strong this is. This is what cold steel uses to make their weapons, and I cauterized it in the in the flame. See, after I tied the canot. I cauterized it because you taught me how to cauterize. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I don't mean I didn't rub a corduroy. That's a, from my bondage days. Yeah, I didn't rub th this on a on a on corduroy pants. Oh my God, my grandmother used to get me those when I was in high school. I hated them. They used to always wear out by the crotch. You know where your thighs are rubbing together. Corduroy. I wore corduroy. Yeah. Corduroy's. But I like to cauterize the, 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 the skulls of right-wing, greedy, selfish, corrupt Republicans and sell out, suck up uh, corporatist Democrats yeah. with this shillelagh. I guarantee you that, brother. I guarantee. I uh, guarantee. Yeah. All right, go ahead. Sink your teeth into the readings because we're way behind. As we end the festival commemor comm comm commemorating... The Epiphany today, January the 6th. Mm. The Epiphany. It may be well to remember, or consider, excuse me. You have to excuse me, people, because I had something in my eye. And I removed it, I believe. But there is still some sort of residual uh, problemo. So, you know. I may not uh, well, see everything properly here. Well, uh, uh, th with this climate change, uh, uh, all year seems to be uh, tis the season for allergies. I'm a sufferer myself. Anyway, reconsider what the Christmas holiday is and how we should observe it. 
The strongest protest against the current celebration is that of some Christians who declare that there is a scheme to take Christ out of Christmas and that there is a war on Christmas. Christ was never in Christmas. He wasn't born in December, you idiots. In this, an unfortunate element of Christianity is revealed. Yeah, and, and guess what? A fertilized egg and an embryo that breeds like a fish is not a human baby. You, you, you numbskulls, you. Namely, a regrettable ego and possessiveness. Christmas must be theirs to interpret, and no one is permitted to express any other belief. Right, and 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 uh, the whole idiotic illogic of violence in the name of religion makes no sense at all because no religion has been proven. I challenge those who speak of a war to cite one voice or writing that argues for getting rid of Jesus and repudiating the belief that Christmas is his day of birth. Christians are free to interpret the day in this way, but they must be opposed when they insist that it be the only interpretation, leaving the rest of humanity to have no more than a day off. I wonder why they don't seek God's interpretation. Yeah, why, why do they seek man's interpretation? Yeah, yeah. trust not men! Maybe. Trust not in men! Maybe they trust in men because it's all part of that ancient uh, 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 flaw, that ancient sin of vanity. Well, yeah, huh? Selfishness and ego, that's, whole, that's part of vanity, right? Oh, yeah. But this holiday precedes the coming of Jesus by many centuries. Uh -huh. And it celebrated something that may well now include Jesus, but also interprets the holiday in a much wider way, a way in which all mankind, those of other religions and no religion, may join. When the winter solstice has passed, our days begin to grow longer, again as the darkness recedes. It is this that we all can celebrate. Winter solstice Yule, Hail Krampus. And some Christians do wrong in forbidding it. By insisting on narrowing a day to their purpose, they would deprive us of what all of us can experience, the joyful realization of the coming again of the light. Hear, hear, sir. Wonderful words from the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman and, and the uh, the information that you have uh, researched. I want to apologize ahead of time, viewers. Uh, we may have to break more than once during this show, but uh, do not fear. Uh, uh, I mean, do not be concerned because the show will be in its entirety uh, in, in one video, being that our technical um, dilemma was solved. You know, uh, before you had to see the show in parts, part really? one, part two, part three, part four, and sometimes part five, but not Ooh, anymore. We're back to one solid mega show. No commercials. No. No corporatism, no commercials. There's, oh God, it's commercials. Oh, I am so sick of... Of, of getting bombarded with car dealer commercials. I, I thought it was only for the holidays. The same annoying uh, uh, car dealer and insurance commercials just come nonstop and they're so stupid. They make no sense, but they're obnoxious, you know. They, 
who the hell who runs advertising agencies today they're, they're like a bunch of douchebags I bet because there's, there's nothing clever and funny about most American commercials American commercials that's for certain you know all right it is gratifying to know that Governor Christie won't cave into the spirit of the holidays rather than extend a helping hand to those less fortunate a helping hand his administration has chosen this time of year to cut a safety net for 11,000 people who will no longer qualify for the food stamp program. Oh, is this the first time you're reading this? Until they are working again. Yes, of course. In other words, you, yeah, you have to, the new stipulation for, all right, go ahead. Yeah, the it, last one was 9,000. Oh, they got, it was. we have a new number. You see how Republicans are? They, they want more and more and more. They want to take more and more. Now, like I was, first, Wisconsin says, no seafood, white potatoes, or ketchup for, for the poor on food stamps. Watch. It's going to continue and continue and continue until there's nothing but rice and beans left. And then, not even, no food stamps Maybe at all. Maybe they'll take the beans away because they might be they're a little more expensive than rice, no? Yeah. Ah, no, I think okay. they want to uh, eradicate, to eliminate all food stamps, welfare, social services, completely across the board. Because they want the poor to die Depo and stop using their resources. Depopulation of the the poor. That's, That's what they or throw them into throw them into privatized prisons and uh, have now them... Now you're talking, baby. And, and, and uh, have them bring back slavery, have them work as slaves. Right. The change, which took effect on January 1, will leave some of New Jersey's most unfortunate residents without assistance. Critics claim the move is punitive because funding doesn't even come from the state. It's a federal program. So what's this fucking problem? He has to uh, uh, pander to the right wing. Like the He's trying to win New Hampshire. The, the Republican Party um, uh, has, they all have the, collectively have the same agenda. Yeah, so he's got to pander to that. Yeah. Shrink government. To shrink government, you must, you must stop all social programs. Well, his new uh, 2016 campaign commercial he calls himself like the liberal Republican. He says he agrees with Obama. He, he agreed on a, a, with President Obama on everything, which is a total lie. The whole commercial is a total lie. In A Christmas Carol, Charles Dickens wrote about a gentleman who said to Scrooge, a few of us are endeavoring to raise a fund to buy the poor some meat and drink and means of warmth. We choose this time because it is a time of all others when want is keenly felt and abundance rejoices. The Christie administration's response would have been, Christmas is a poor excuse every 25th of December to pick a man's pocket. Well, you, uh, uh, charity is voluntary. Is vo voluntary. Voluntary. It's not. You're not forcing anybody to give. So how could you pick a man's pocket if uh, all you have to do is be a miserable bastard and say no? Well, you're taking his taxes away. You don't want to oh, pay any taxes, no, man. What's but the matter they, with you? No, but they want. The middle class taxes yes, to be taken poor. to be taken away. Well, the That's poor true. consumption from the poor is not that much. Certainly is. Nah. And they pay the regressive taxes. Okay. Like the ones on food, the ones on uh, 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 what's the uh, what's the state tax? 
the state income taxes, sales tax, sales taxes, and etc. Yes, they pay a lot of taxes. So, so you pay taxes on your telephone. You pay taxes on PSC and G. So that all adds up. Of course. And there's more poor than rich. Ain't that something? It goes back to that old canard. How many refrigerators can the, the rich buy? Yachts. Okay. Uh, private jets. Yeah. Yeah, they can buy one of those, you know. And guess what? Know. The rich can write everything off on their taxes. No. The cost of labor. They own a business, they can. The cost of labor. Yeah. It's tax deductible, but they keep on crying about the minimum wage going up. The writer of a recent letter opens with a question about whether people have seen the latest NASA report on climate change. My question back is, did he? The letter continues to blame the hysterical media for not reporting on NASA's findings that fossil fuels are cooling the earth because it goes against their ideology. I think there may be another reason no one has heard about this report. It doesn't exist. What does exist is a story which appeared in a British tabloid claiming that NASA has discovered new information on fossil fuels and their effect on global warming. The fact that something appears on the internet doesn't mean it's true. It really is important to check the source of the information. If the science deniers are getting their information from sources such as this and promoting this nonsense as truth, it is up to the rest of us to bring reality to light. Okay. Gotcha. You, excuse me. You may have heard this before. Eat less sugar, fats, and sodium, and eat more fruits and vegetables. Well, especially vegetables, uh, uh, um, not not genetically modified, but you know. <laughs> And that is essentially what the new dietary guidelines by the United States government released on Thursday. Then how come they still let the U.S. food industry stock supermarket shelves with high sugared uh, items? Because we don't believe in deregulation. And trans fats. Okay. You're getting double whammy of toxins. We have a free market. A free market. You know what a free market means? Corporations can do any goddamn thing they want. They can lie to you and poison you all at the same time. Of course. And they don't have to label it. You don't have to know that it's poison and cast it aside. Right. Not they only not lie. only do they want to poison you and, and rob you and depopulate you. <laughs> Um, but uh, hey, even drinking water, a bottle does, drinking water is spiked with chemicals. You don't, you don't know that? Um, what I'm, about the fracking water? Yeah. That's left over. You know. they, they're destroying everything. That on top of the fact that the Republican Congress is constantly trying to repeal Obamacare. They don't want the poor to have health care when you get sick. They don't want you to be able to go to the doctor. No, because, uh, what did you say, only Trumpy uh, said something about replacing it with something better? But he didn't say what it was. Right, right. But all the other Republicans, they don't want to replace it with anything. Okay? No. They want to steal your Social Security. Which is not really theirs to take. It's not an entitlement. It never was. They want it. They, well, that means they want to steal it. Yes. Of course. The Departments of Agriculture and Health and Human Services have advised adults to consume less than 10% of their daily calories from added sugars, 
less than 10% from saturated fats, and no more than 2,300 milligrams a day or one teaspoon of sodium. Sodium is a, is a necessary mineral. People don't realize that. It's an electrolyte, correct? Yeah, but uh, 2,300 is a bigger, you know, is a big... Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I, I'm not sure what it is exactly, but if I remember correctly, it's somewhere around 600, maybe. Yeah, people with hypertension have to watch mm -hmm. the sodium intake. Yeah, that too. Lean meat! The subject of intense industry lobbying was recommended as part of a healthy diet. See, I have to disagree because that assumes that fats are demonized. And fats are a another super health food that's essential to good health. Fats were, the, f the fats being demonized was a big food industry lie for decades. <laughs> the biggest thing that we were hoping for was a cap on sugar said Aaron Polinsky, registered dietitian and founder of the Vernon Nutrition Center in Ramsey. Yeah, that, Finally, we have that. That's the toxin. That's the enemy. But notice where they go for the information. A registered Official dietitian. Yeah. Uh, a person who... And what does she call her place? A nutrition center. A nutrition center by an individual with a master's degree to call themselves a registered dietitian and who who do they work with usually? Where do they work? Hospitals with medical drug pushing doctors. They are part of the um, allopath big pharma industry. And, and, and they're, they're also the people that slap together those pathetic hospital menus, like, you know, giving a cardio patient lots of carbs mm -hmm. and sugar and very low fat. See, they, they're still demonizing fats and allowing the refined carbohydrates, which is the true enemy, mm -hmm. the true poison. Did you know, by the way, did you know that butter is a super health food? In yes, it is. In reality? In reality? Yeah. You ever see our bottle, bu bottle, our butter compared to like imported Irish butter? Yeah, was that Kerrygold or something? Kerrygold, yes. Yes, yes. Butter is um, uh, rich in, um, I believe, the. Uh, uh, Conjugated linoleic acid. I uh, believe it's a uh, a certain um, certain nutrients for that Im stimulate the immune system. Uh, fat soluble vitamins. Butter is very rich in vitamins A, D, E, and K. You know butter what I mean. Is better. That's that's. that's butter is better. That's right. Butter is often best next to coconut oil. Next to. Uh, Organic extra virgin coconut. Well, Gary says Gary no yeah. says the three the three oils to cook with are macadamia. Yeah, Atkins like macadamia coconut. by the way. Yeah. And mustard seed. Mustard seed oil? You see oh yeah, a, a grape seed oil is no longer recommended, I hear. Um well, if you well, when you're saying grapeseed, if you mean canola, that's GMO. That, no, that's rape. Now that's rapeseed. Yeah. Okay. Well. No, you see, Gary is um, a um, a very devoted vegan. Gary, no, will never really recommend any animal source foods. No. So you have to understand where he's coming from. Mm -hmm. You know, so he's not going to recommend butter, but that's his choice. I think he does recommend butter. He does? I believe so. You would have to, you know, depending on what you want to do with from, it. From organically raised, grass-fed dairy cows. Yeah, well, that's why I say, take a, take a look at ours, take a look at Catacold from Ireland, and I'm, I'm sure you're going to see a big difference. Not, not from the teat. Not from the teat. I know you're going to laugh at me. Not from, <laughs> not, not from the teat. 
of uh, American uh, dairy cows loaded with a recumbent bovine growth hormone and antibiotics from Monsanto, by the way, who makes the recumbent, not cucumber, the recumbent, hold on, the levity bells, recumbent bovine growth hormone. Or as a friend of mine says, how do you make a hormone? Pus. Hmm? pus. There's a lot of pus? You're In right. Milk. That's correct. I mean, from... Coming from mastitis teats or whatever. Yeah. The guidelines issued twice each decade refine recommendations made nearly one year ago by a government-appointed scientific panel, which prompted lobbying by food and beverage companies, including Coca-Cola. The final rules dialed back many of that panel's suggestions. Uno momento. Go ahead. Including a section on sustainable eating and public policy measures such as a tax on sugary drinks. Second from the right. Okay. Put it low. Yeah, I know all about it. Yeah, continue, okay. continue. Although the recommendations sound familiar, some were new. Consuming up to five cups of coffee a day Rescinding the limitations on cholesterol consumption via foods such as eggs and shrimp. And emphasizing that men and boys should eat less meat and more vegetables. The guidelines also reiterated the role of grains and low fat or fat free dairy in a healthy diet and of plant-based oils and naturally occurring oils in nuts and seeds and avocados. Oh yeah, they're monounsaturated. Uh, uh, almond oil, avocado, peanut oil, they're healthy monounsaturates. Uh, maybe uh, even macadamia is a mono. Peanut of the night. No, is seriously, is that, that, is that what peanut no. means? No. Because I like Pinot Noir uh, wine, <laughs> red wine, mm -hmm. from the Pinot Noir grape. You people with no class, you wouldn't know about such things. Well, he's, he thinks he knows about class, that guy in the commercial. I don't think Pinot Noir peanut peanut means night. peanut of the night. You see the girl, I, when the eyes, you know, cross over at him. You know? Yeah. What the hell? <laughs> By focusing on small shifts in what we eat and drink. Eating healthy becomes more manageable, said Health and Human Services Secretary Sylvia Matthews Burwell. Oh yeah, I really want to go to her for advice too. Lauren Cohan, another registered dietitian. They're not worth a damn. Based in Englewood, New Jersey and Franklin Lake, applauded the report. What I like about these guidelines the most is it gets people thinking a little differently. Oh, God. She said, adding that for dietitians, the recommendations are a no brainer. Many people will remain a no brainer. Are Karen a no brainer. Karen Goldberg. Huh? Karen Goldberg. Another registered dietitian. Another big pharma whore. And owner of Nutrition 101 in Wayne. Wow, Nutrition, Nutrition 101. A registered di see, registered dietitians are allowed to call themselves nutritionists by big pharma and officialdom. They are they are not qualified to be nutritionists. They've sought that many many years here in New Jersey to be able to do that. It's like when they went against... I presume against, someone gave them that right. You it, know, it, it's like when uh, um, the medical profession for decades prevented chiropractic to be accepted by uh, and paid for by health insurance, Medicare, and such, you know. 
Oh yeah. Same, same thing. Because it takes away from the the, the never-ending greed of Big Pharma. They, she welcomed the shift in focus from cholesterol and fat to added sugar. We've been so focused on cholesterol and fat in food, and we still have a problem with obesity and diabetes. Cholesterol, dietary cholesterol, is very important a very important nutrient. It is the raw. It is the human sex hormones in men and women. It is not bad for you. It is good for you. You know. So when the doctor and besides, said, your liver makes like seventy-five percent of the cholesterol in your body. You don't ingest it. No. Like so, when your doctor tells you you can't have shrimp, lobster, right. crab, you know, oysters, clams. Right. He's wrong. Because of the cholesterol content. He's yeah. wrong. It's it's good for you. Egg yolks. I'm not yoking around with you either, man. So, become, be in the ecstasy. Some experts are critical of the new guidelines on meat, noting that it fails to home in on appropriate amounts and downplays the health risk of eating red meat. They should be more specific, Goldberg said. Yeah. You like the black rose? It made its debut last week. A rose is black in Spanish Harlem. Ding, ding, ding. A rose by any other name would still smell the same. Very clever, sir. That that is a poem. I did not make that up. Yeah, I know. I've heard it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, rose is black in Spain. It is now harder to find out where your beef or pork was born. Yeah, thanks to Republicans and deregulation. Raised and slaughtered. They don't want you to know where your food comes from. After more than a decade of wrangling, Congress repealed a labeling law last month that required retailers to include the animal's country of origin on the packages of red meat. What did I say? The Republicans are at it again. It's a major victory for the meat industry, which had fought the law in Congress and the courts since the early 2000s. Don't, don't, does, don't, don't all these American uh, um, um, numbskulls realize what they're doing when they re-elect Republicans? They, they have no clue. Obviously not. They have no clue. Did you ever come across anything concerning the these the new Jim Crow laws against gay people in Virginia? Did you did you come across anything? Because the Republicans either did it or they're trying to do it to ban gay people across the board, period, in the state of Virginia. Jim Crow laws. Well, they're not going to get away with that. So they're trying because to they do. It. Do, do Supreme Court has already spoken. Gay marriage is constitutional. So, th listen, their their agenda is so obvious. They're fascists. No kidding. They are corrupt. They're evil. They're wicked. They're greedy. They're but fascists. They are God's people. Which which God? Oh, I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, and it doesn't matter, obviously. They are Satan, probably most likely. Most likely. All right, continue. We finish up with this. Lawmakers said they had no choice but to get rid of the labels after the World Trade Organization repeatedly ruled against them. The World Trade Organization recently authorized Canada and Mexico, which had challenged the law to begin more than one billion dollars in economic retaliation against the United States. Interesting. See, this is what the, like the TPP would have done also and made worse. Yeah. See, under these uh, NAFTA, obviously, NAFTA, 
they have these laws in there where if you deny a company to continue its business, etc., you will be you will be lose. You will lose. They will take you to the court, WTO, and they will win, and you will have to pay them the profit that they lost because they couldn't do what you wanted them to do. Even though it was ill-gotten gains. Correct. Hey, Wall Street loves ill-gotten gains. Well, nobody was arrested. Jeez. Come on, guys, cut it out. Uh, Hillary Clinton said that. Yeah. Yeah. But when we, um, yeah, when we come back from lunch, I wanna, I wanna go, I wanna go. Give a check, see, please. Yeah, I wanna uh, go. I wanna bash Hillary Clinton. Oh boy. I wanna do some uh, some witch hunting, witch bashing. Oh boy. Yeah. Okay, it's done. Yeah. U.S. exporters can now breathe a sigh of relief. Senator Pat Roberts, uh, Republican of Kansas, Chairman of the Senate Agricultural, Nutrition, and Forestry Committee, the longtime opponent of the labels, helped add the repeal to a massive year-end spending bill. Yeah. It was approved in the House on June 11. After the law was passed, Agricultural Secretary Tom Vilsack said the government immediately would stop requiring the labels. Consumer groups say the repeal is a disappointment, just as consumers are asking for more information on their food packages. Advocates say the labels help people make more informed buying decisions and encourage purchases of American meat. Before repeal, the labels told shoppers that a particular cut of meat was born in Canada, raised and slaughtered in the United States, or born and raised and slaughtered in the United States. Or the chickens were born and raised in the United States full of drugs and hormones, then sent to mainland China to be processed and uh, and probably tainted even more. Yeah, and then, with Malamin and the other... And then shipped back to the United States you for you to eat yeah. arsenic-ridden uh, hormone and antibiotic-ridden uh, 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 poultry. And God yeah. knows what else. Because yeah. in China, if the, if, the, if the livestock drops dead from illness, they still... As long as they're, you know, yeah, they, they don't waste nothing. They still process it and sell it to you and, you know, you know it's all about money, 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 you know. And, and uh, diseased and dead and dying, yeah. they will include also. Hey, the poor people in Beijing have to wear a, a, a gas mask practically to go outside. Hey, we got a big methane leak here in uh, the United States. Been going on for over a month. People are sick and got to move out. Where's it coming from? Uh, I forget where it was. I saw the post last night. Oh. It's probably one of the western states, you know, with all that stupid fracking and everything going on. You see, Oklahoma had more gosh darn earthquakes this year than anything because of the fracking. Repeal became inevitable once the United States lost all it's the WTO appeals and the retaliation became a possibility but the consumer groups criticized Congress for repealing the law for ground meat and pork in addition to the fresh cuts of meat that were the subject of WTO concerns the bill was a holiday gift to the meat packing industry from Congress complained the advocacy group Food and Water Watch. Meat packers who buy Mexican cattle were some of the law's most aggressive com opponents. The repeal also was a big defeat for lawmakers from northern border states where U.S. ranchers directly compete with Canadian ranchers. 
Those lawmakers insisted on including the labeling in the 2002 and 2008 farm bills. Mm -hmm. And this year fought to replace it with a voluntary program once the WTO rulings came down. But after years of success, this time they were not able to find enough support. Roger Johnson of the National Farmers Union, which has heavy membership in those states, said the group was furious about the repeal. Packers will be able to once again deliberately deceive consumers. Unbelievable. Still, there was some good news. Yeah for food labeling, labeling advocates in the spending bill. Despite an aggressive push by the food industry, lawmakers decided not to add language that would have blocked mandatory labeling of genetically modified ingredients. whoop de doo mm -hmm. Also, a provision by Senator Lisa Murkowski, Republican of Alaska, that figures. Alaska, Republican. Would require labeling of genetically modified salmon recently approved by the Food and Drug Administration. Oh, don't eat um, farm-raised uh, uh, Atlantic salmon. All the, oh sh all the crap settles to the bottom of those ponds. And they eat it. The issue is expected to come up again in 2016 with Vermont set to require labeling on genetically modified food this summer. I salute the state of Vermont like I always do. Very progressive state. You know, um, uh, Washington, uh, Washington, uh, Oregon, Colorado also I should salute for the uh, legalizing marijuana. Uh, somewhat progressive, but Vermont is really, has always been a good progressive state. A little state, but progressive. Uh, I always assumed California would be, but not really. Not if they, they allowed Peter Brabeck of Nestle's to bottle mm. California spring water during this so-called permanent drought. Shame on you, Jerry Brown. Moonbeam Brown is not the liberal progressive you thought he was. He's a corporatist like the uh, b the Hillary and Billary. Hillary and Billary. The day the spending bill passed, Vilsack said he would try to help Congress come up with a middle ground on labeling of engineered food. Here we go. Bipartisanship compromising again. In a way that doesn't create significant market disruption. Oh. While at the same time, recognizing consumers' need to know and right to know basic information. Uh, yeah, the, the right to know what they're putting in their body, in layman's well, terms. Since they want to kill us anyway, they don't give a damn what we're, yeah. we're, we're putting in our bodies, you know what I mean? Right, but all the lemmings out there, all the lemmings out there... They get their news from the mainstream media, which lies to them all the time, which has always been rigged for the rich. There was no liberal media. It was a lie, just like trickle-down economics was a lie. Yeah, Mr. Trickle-down economics, uh, it's pistol down. Uh, got cutter of government, etc., came out of his eight years with the biggest government of all time. And deficits. Yeah. Actually, Obama was okay. relatively a very low government spender. In, uh, st uh, statistically, uh, President Obama... He cut the deficit from $1.3 yeah. to like $600 billion or something. Yeah, I mean, he's like... Uh, I mean, him and, uh, and Billary, I think he even surpassed... Uh, if, if he didn't have the Republican Congress attacking him and obstructing him all, all obstructing him all the time he would even surpass uh, Mr. Billary Clinton. Yeah, we probably would have a surplus. Right, exactly. We're going to take a lunch break now. We'll see you when we get back.
very, very hard pill to swallow. Hi, this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living in the end times, so you need newsletter censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Hey, listen, for the real hard-hitting truth, you need Newsletter Censored. And now, back to the show. Bye-bye. Okay, we are back from lunch. Welcome back, folks. I am bloated. To uh, progressive discussions. I am comfortably full. And uh, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisen is uh, Eisenman is stuffed, bloated, bloated, but not his mouth. No, that's all we need. This is mouth. Uh, I'm a big eater. I think, and, and if I work out, which I do, it makes me more hungry. Uh -huh. you know, and uh, I'm of course James P. Madonna, your host, and with my co-host here for progressive discussion. So let us sink our teeth back into the readings, sir. Have my medicinal antioxidant rich tea. Excuse me. A conservation group reports the number of rhinoceroses poached in South Africa in 2013 was slightly lower than in the previous year. I just I just don't understand the mentality of mankind that that because of greed they over harvest over kill a creature a species and, and it becomes endangered and they continue to do it for the sake of profit and then all of a sudden the creature becomes extinct and they can't they can't exploit it anymore and it's gone citing unidentified sources Elise Dathu, founder of StopRhinoPoaching.com, said there were about 1,160 reported cases of rhino poaching last year, down from 1,215 in 2014. Well, all illegal poaching should stop. I hear Africans kill uh, the uh, the gentle species of chimpanzee. I think they call them the bonomos. Oh bon yeah, bonomos, and they're, they're 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 not they're not vicious like the other ones. Excuse me. They're much <coughs> like uh, humans. They are the, they're closer to human. Yeah, they masturbate a lot. They're closer. <laughs> they're closer to humans than the the temperamental, dangerous chimpanzees, mm. which are violent. The bominoes and the, and the Africans kill them and call them bush meat. They hunt them for their for bush meat. Well, why do you need to hunt such a an intelligent, gentle creature as the bomino ape? I mean, can't they raise can't they raise pigs and and chickens and 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 cattle? Do you have to hunt endangered creatures for bush meat? I don't know. You remember uh, that uh, that taffy candy? Bominos Turkish Bominos taffy. Turkish taffy. Yeah. What makes it Turkish? I don't think uh, people in Turkey. Uh, yeah, they didn't have. I it don't think they wrapped really wrapped up in a piece of paper. I don't think. I didn't think they invented the taffy. No. And and what about saltwater taffy you buy on the boardwalk at the sh at the shore uh, shore resorts? 
There's no, there's nothing salty. There's no sea salt in salt water taffy. <laughs> there's no eggs in an egg cream. Chocolate and vanilla egg cream. Humans are a funny sort. Strange. If the statistic is confirmed, it would be the first annual drop in numbers since rhino poaching surged around 2008 in South Africa, home to most of the world's rhinos. Yeah, there is a species in India, but, you know, it looks like it has, like, dinosaur shells. It looks like a triceratops. Rhinoceros horn is prized in the Far East for its alleged medicinal value. So is a deer antler, but um, de deers do not have to be, a buck does not have to die to give up its antler. They shed them once a year. However, <clears throat> Other conservationists believe the number of rhinos killed last year was higher. During a visit to South Africa in early December, Britain's Prince Harry said poachers had killed 1,500 rhinos in 2015. He did not cite a source. The South African government plans to release its own 2015 statistics on rhino poaching early this year. Conservationist Allison Thompson believes the number of rhinos poached in 2015 is higher than 1160. And wrote, she wrote an email to the Associated Press on Saturday that there was an increase in rhino orphans whose mothers were killed by the poachers. So I suppose uh, the mommy rhino also has a horn or two? I guess. I guess, and, and I also hope... Excuse me, I'm going to sneeze, I think. Go ahead. I, I also hope that uh, the orphans are collected uh, for, and, and taken care of in zoos or conservation um, um, I don't know how safe the uh, conservation uh, lands are in Africa yeah, yeah. apparently well, obviously not obviously that's where they're poaching them they're poaching them on now yeah, those lands that, the lion the, the famous lion was Cecil. killed Cecil right yeah was killed on conservation land yeah so I, uh, I'm, I'm just assuming that the orphans are better off in, in, in a good zoo, like the San Diego Zoo or whatever. Wherever, somewhere in, um, <coughs> or somewhere in Southern Europe where it can, you know, it can enjoy uh, warm weather and be taken care of. It's really very sad. The stats do not reflect the collateral damage of rhinos that died subsequent to being a victim of an attempted poaching and all the carcasses that lie in the bush yet to be found people are so evil human the human species is very vile and wicked she speculated <clears throat> that the government sought to downplay the rhino poaching problem by issuing less frequent updates on poaching statistics Edna, Edna Mulawa, South Africa's environmental minister, said the government is committed to providing accurate, timely information. Poachers have targeted rhinos to meet rising demand for their horns in parts of Asia, particularly Vietnam. Consumers believe rhino horn has medicinal benefits, but there is no scientific evidence to support yeah, of course. the belief. If I'm not mistaken, it's also a, an aphrodisiac. A horn, um, uh, I can't speak for all horns, I mean, but in the case of the rhinoceros, uh, it, it is compacted hairs. Uh, keratin. Yeah. 
and um, you know, I mean, they 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 kill uh, tigers. You know, there, there's poaching in Asia. You know, with tigers, which are endangered. I mean, uh, the human race is really <coughs> terribly greedy, selfish, wicked, evil, destructive creature. The only evil creature on the planet. I mean that 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 does things for out of greed. And and I think, you know, you ever hear those sayings? Uh, the proof is in the pudding. Oh, and uh, if it looks, walks, and sounds like a duck, it's a duck. It's a duck. Well, there has to be a reason why the people of third world countries are, in fact, in third world countries. You know what I mean? Like they they were always third world. They're third world today, and most likely will probably remain third world. But the people that inhabit third world countries, I don't care if I get heat for saying this, there's got to be a reason. There's got to be a reason why people in first world countries, like Europe, um, the uh, uh, economic giants in Asia, you know why they don't do this? Why don't they don't do these well, things, or they don't have the same political corruption and it, uh, human rights? About for a country to have wealth, it must have resources. Now, resources. the Saudi Arabians were not wealthy people until oil was discovered. They would be, and it was discovered that countries like America and England needed oil. Well. See? They needed oil because that was a choice to to stay with fossil fuels. Well, it was once whale. Yeah, you know, oh, where, uh, the right bottom. whale. Yeah, spermaceti. Watch your mouth. <laughs> but you know, uh, Jim, Jim Spermaceti. That's a that's a funny Italian name for a, for a porno producer. Hey, you know, well, but, but what I'm saying is, uh. Like you said, okay, in order for a country to be first world and to have economic wealth and power, they must have resources. And they must trade those resources. Right. Now, Saudi Arabia, uh, Kuwait, uh, United Arab Emirates, and so on and so on. Dubai. Dubai, whatever. All those countries, if, if there was no, uh, if they didn't have large amounts of crude oil, they would most likely also be third world countries. So, it's it's oil, oil, oil. I mean, uh, uh, I was listening, I was watching a YouTube video of a Middle Eastern man. By the way, tell them it's raining. Oh, all that racket you hear, people, is heavy rain. It started to rain here in northeastern New Jersey. I thought it was through. Yeah, I thought, yeah, I don't know what was going on. But anyway, I will raise my volume. Uh, <clears throat> the, uh, this gentleman was giving a speech uh, in front of many people. He was, uh, he was from, uh, he was Saudi Arabian, I think. Um, and uh, he was speaking in Arabic and they were, you know, they were translating it. And what he was saying was that the people that live in these oil-rich countries, they have too much time on their hands. Uh, they, you know, they basically kill time by playing and, and doing recreational things. And because they're, they're so wealthy, they get bored. They said they wish they... Oh, he, he was visiting Germany and he, and he noticed how Europeans had these long work days. And they all were busy all the time, kept busy. This and gentleman's problem, the, the problem he was trying to uh, uh, say was that those people in those countries don't make anything. Yeah, that's him. Thank you. They don't, there's no manufacturing in, in, in Middle Eastern countries, in, in the Muslim countries in the Middle East. There's no manufacturing. And, and the people have a lot of time on their hands and all the, they're rich from oil. And it's like, it's like ca taking candy from a baby. It's like, it's like always there. 
and and they have they're so wealthy they have they have all this time on their hands they don't need to put in long work days mm -hmm. but 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 there's no manufacturing and he right. he said he wishes they they manufactured something yeah because if you don't make things you can't trade things that was the video and okay. you remembered yes, good I did. okay I found it fascinating it is to listen to and then it's also fascinating how come the old uh, right wingers never get the, uh, the point that uh, uh, it's the wealthy who become lazy, not the poor, when you give them uh, money. You know, they always want to scapegoat the poor. Jeez. Everything is the fault of the poor because they, they want to get rid of the poor. They want to enslave the poor or kill them off. Yes. Now, you know what's strange? Uh, we're listening to all this rain, and it seems to be slowing down, but the the light outside is getting brighter. It's almost like a summer rainstorm or springtime rainstorm. I'm telling you, climate change is real. Don't don't let Republicans lie to you. I see the difference in the weather this fall and winter, and 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 it's like. The, the beginning of January. Well, November and December were the warmest on record. Yeah. It's, we had a 70, we had a high of 70 in, de, in the end of December. One of those days or one or two of those mm -hmm. days. I mean, it's real. It's real. Are the, are, are the polls, uh, are, is the polar ice cap uh, growing, like Republicans say, or is it shrinking? I haven't heard anything. Well, the I was wondering if the, the, uh, the Northern Passage had iced over yet. I do know that there was something about they found five ships sunk in the Northern Passage when they, they got stuck in the ice and they couldn't get out. Well, I watched a documentary of some, some uh, gray whales that, uh, that went north to <coughs> that went to northern Alaska and they uh, they must have you know they usually marine creatures usually follow the food and they got stuck they couldn't go back out to the to the Bering Sea uh, there you go. because the ice froze around them and they were they were stuck so they uh, they had these uh, uh, these ice fishermen from the Great Lakes area brought their machines for keeping the the water circulating, you know, it, it, it pushes the warm water to the surface, and uh, they, they saved the whales. They, 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 the, the gray whales were able to uh, expedite the area, well, go back out to sea, although otherwise they would have died. Unfortunately, there was a video up on Facebook right. last night of a deer who had wandered into a reservoir and it iced over. And somehow it broke its leg, I guess, trying, it got iced and trying to get out of the ice. They tried, the fireman was out there with the fireman sled, tried to save it, but they had it euthanized. Hypothermia. Broken leg, etc. What are you going to, I mean, how do you, how do you get a, well. Well, he must have broken, you know, trying to get out. Even, even if you, even if you. You put the deer to uh, not to sleep. I'm sorry. Even if you if you sedate the deer and set its leg, how do you get the deer yeah. to stay off its leg and allow it to heal? It's a wild animal. It's not going to happen. So they might as well turn it into venison. I saw a video a few uh, few weeks ago about a small deer, a fawn. Well, maybe not a fawn, because I don't know if it was female or male. But the, the female's a doe, the male's a buck, the, the doe, baby, the baby's a fawn. The doe had two babies, and it left this baby because the baby had broken its leg. So she left it behind, went off with the other one. Yeah. And this guy took it in, and he put a uh, splint on the leg yeah. and an extension on the leg, so as if he was walking on four legs. And, until it healed. And did the, did the deer get and healed? Did the deer tame? No, he went to find the mother, and he did find the mother, and brought it back. She, she accepted. She accepted it. Yeah. Oh wow, that's a happy story. <laughs> See, could have been worse though, you know. 
Oh, of course. Of course it could have been. All right, so how are we doing here on time? Uh, do you have any heavy-duty... Uh, Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders. Anders. Bernie Sanders. Raised more than $33 million. Yeah. During the past three months. In his bid to win the Democratic nomination. Just short of the amount brought in by rival Hillary Clinton during the same period. Yeah, the, the big CPAC uh, collector. Hillary the Witch. Hold on. Hillary the Witch Clinton. The corporatist. Hillary and Billary. Sanders. Howard Cosell. A self described Democratic Socialist has now collected $73 million for the primaries through a powerful online fundraising apparatus that should help him compete with Clinton. That's the, that, that, that's the only way. Uh, he can campaign is online because the uh, mainstream media will not mention his name at all. Actually, uh, I was pissed off at one mainstream media um, news reporter that uh, had a smile on his face when he announced that uh, the Republican Congress once again will try to repeal Obamacare. And the guy, the guy doesn't, nobody said anything about it. They just, they reported it like they were happy about it. Uh, by the way, you know who died? Who? Wayne Rogers. He did? Wasn't he on MASH? Trapper John. Trapper John. Yes. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. Oh, that's a shame. I didn't know that. Well, he wasn't that old. No, know? of course he wasn't not. wasn't that old. But, uh... Wow. Anyway, his haul will allow him to spend money at a comparable rate with Clinton, who raised $37 million since the beginning of October. How about that? And $112 million during 2015. Well, the CPAC money is always going to rival the donations that Bernie Sanders collects, but Bernie Sanders can still get adequate yeah, Fun funding. Well, yeah, good use of the money. Yeah, yeah. This people-powered campaign is revolutionizing American politics, said Jeff Weaver, Sanders's campaign manager. Sanders's. Sanders. Sanders. Yeah, Sanders with a, 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 a hyphen. In other words, possessive. Capitalism Sanders. in a conch shop, brother. Okay. Hyphen. What we are showing is that we can run a strong national campaign without a super PAC and without depending on millionaires and billionaires for their support. Right. Which in turn you owe them favors once you get elected. We are making history and we are proud of it. Damn right damn right you're making history and you should be proud of it. Clinton is the Democratic frontrunner in national polls. Yeah, because the, main, the mainstream media is behind Hillary Clinton. That's why. But Sanders remains within striking distance. <sighs> well, not if you uh, not if you listen, uh, you, you look at the polls on, online, the internet polls, the internet polls seems to have Sanders ahead of Hillary. You know? Against her in Iowa, which holds its caucuses on February the 1st. Sanders is hoping to surprise Clinton in Iowa and then use his New England ties to defeat her in the New Hampshire primary on February 9th. Now when you're done, I have something to say. Where polls have shown him with a slight advantage. Yeah, well, actually, all the internet polls have them at a slight advantage. Sometimes uh, 10 points. I saw three. 
Alright. And that a three is within the the uh, the what you call of error. The margin of error. Doesn't really mean that much. The campaign finance estimates indicate that Sanders should have the resources to mount an effective challenge. His campaign said it had $28.4 million in the bank at the end of 2015. Clinton's campaign, which spent about $75 million during 2015, to build a large data-driven organization, ended the year with $38 million in cash on hand. Sanders spent about $45 million in 2015. If I'm not mistaken, Mr. Trump only spent maybe a million or two. Yeah. Well, you know, I know Bernie wants to win over um, Donald Trump supporters and Hillary Clinton supporters, but in my opinion, uh, Trump supporters, Republican supporters in general, teabaggers, and Hillary Clinton uh, 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 man-hating feminist supporters are all stupid motherfucking scumbags, in my opinion. Bonafide. Bonafide. Like the woman on the Popeye chicken, Popeye's uh, a Louisiana chicken commercial. Bonafide chicken. Well, these are bonafide assholes and morons. <laughs> basically. <laughs> I like Popeyes, actually. It's my favorite fast food. Uh, fast food. My favorite fast food. Fast he food. stepped up his expenditures during the fourth quarter when he began television advertising and increased the size of his paid staff in early states. Yep. That's right. Most of Sanders' uh, fundraising came through 2.5 million donations. Most of them made online, a number that his team said surpassed President Obama's record. Wow. With a number of 2.2 million donations. Wow. In 2011. You don't say. Sanders' average donation was $27. An amount that will allow him to return to his contributors for more money during the spring. Only a few hundred of his million individuals, donors, gave the maximum of $2,700. But Clinton is also helping build the party for the general election. She raised $18 million for the Democratic National Committee and state Democratic parties nationwide in the fourth quarter. The witch Wasserman Schitz, remember her? Putting her total haul for the past three months at $55 million. Lovely. The DNC money is aimed at helping Clinton in the general election should she win the party's nomination. Helping Clinton in the general election. That's the key word, helping Clinton. Sanders, by comparison, did not raise any money for the DNC last year. Well, the DNC is full of corporatists. Although his campaign has said it plans to fundraise on behalf of the National Party. No oh, good. Hander! The third major Democrat in the race, former Maryland Governor Martin O'Malley, has not yet provided fundraising estimates for the quarter, but has struggled against Clinton and Sanders in both donations and polls. Yeah, he's, um... He should be able to count up his money really quick because he ain't got none! No. No, I, I mean, he's a he's a likable guy. He's a very intelligent man, but he's just not cutting it in the campaign. Period. Um, I just want to say um, that um, there are 
many, many progressive liberals that um, that are that are missing the truth. It's just going right over their head. Ooh. They're missing the real hard hitting truth. And when I the reason why I say that is because they're posting things online. They're posting articles online that go something like this. Uh, we need to stop the war between Bernie Sanders supporters and Hillary Clinton supporters and we need to oh, yeah. to all get together for Team Blue. Kumbaya. Kumbaya. Oh, kumbaya. The kumbaya, right. Now, uh, what what the 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 real hard hitting truth that they're missing is that um, uh, Hillary and Hillary Clinton are not really Team Blue. They are corporatists. They always have been. Many Democrats today are sellout, suck ups also, and corporatists as well. They're not the Democrats of FDR and JFK and Harry Truman. They're not even the Republican of Dwight D. Eisenhower. Bingo. They're corporatists. So, no, to, you know, Dwight D. Eisenhower had three budget surpluses. He was more to the left than Hillary and Hillary. Well, he knew how to raise money for the government. It's called his... Yeah, and he also was responsible for in the, the first interstate highway system, wasn't he? Well, yeah, he spent the money wisely. Yeah. And carefully. Right. That's what I'm so, saying. So, you know, all you people out there, I, I realize what the selfish agenda of the feminists are. I'm not even going to give them any attention because we already know that's all they care about. Okay, now, because they got to bone up their ass about men. Ooh. Now... Hillary and Hillary Clinton are corporatists, always have been, they're sellouts, they're not blue, they're not progressive, they're not liberal, they're not team blue. So Sanders and Clinton together as a team is not team blue, it is, a, uh, it is like a bipartisanship compromise between a conservative and a liberal. You're not going to get team blue. Now, now when you say, go team blue... I think of Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren as his vice presidential running mate. Uh -huh. Now that's Team Blue. Both of one mind, yes. Or Bernie Sanders and um, another successful Democrat, uh, governor of Minnesota. Or Alan Grayson. I'm, I'm not too familiar with Alan Grayson. I think he's from Florida. He's very... Uh... <laughs> He's it, very. Um, is he a sharp cookie? Sharp cookie and and, uh, and progressive. He, yes, very progressive. That's but he's but he's smart. I was looking for when oh, he yeah. speaks. I mean, you're mesmerized. You you listen. To oh him. yeah, he was in once. They kicked him out. Now he's back in again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I would think I would think for the for the female vote. I well even even if she wasn't a woman, even if it if her name if she was a man, Warren is is up there as a top pick. Right, because it's all about policies. It's not about man, woman, child. Yeah. Uh, you know. Well, whatever. I mean, I mean to cozy up to all the uh, all the uh, feminist career women out there, and uh, uh, you know, it'll be nice to have a, a boy girl ticket. You know what I mean? Like for instance, well, we had one we had with Geraldine Ferraro and. Uh Huchigu and yeah. uh, Palin and now, now what, McCain. What, well, what's her name had? Um, Come on. What Barb, the mistake Barbara Buono made when she ran against Chris Christie. Two women. Uh, it was a, it was, it was too, it was too lesbian looking. It wasn't a mixed ticket. It was two women. You had Barbara Buono for governor of New Jersey and, and this other woman for lieutenant governor. It didn't, I feel it didn't sit, uh, did not sit well with the male voters in New Jersey. You can't, you can't look too feminist. You can't have the two women and expect men to be all happy about it. I'm sorry. She might be very qualified, but it's just not going to happen. Uh, but I think, I think, uh, as far as policies 
as far as uh, competency, as far as capabilities go, I think a, a Sanders Warren ticket would be a dream team in 2016 yeah. for uh, the Democratic uh, nomination. Now, of course, I would, I would prefer they ran as independents, but uh, you know, with the oligarch and the mainstream media the way it is, you can't really, uh, you don't have a, a chance. A snowball's chance in hell. Because nobody knows Jill Stein except. Or Rocky e Anderson. Except. Uh, or the other one. People who. Or how about Bill Eisen? Listen to Not Gary Knowles. Not running this year, but you know. If it wasn't for Gary Knowles' uh, Progressive Radio Network, That's I would have never heard the words Rocky Anderson and Jill Stein. No, you wouldn't. Now Jill Stein's getting a little more face time this of course, year. Nobody ever heard of uh, Ralph Nader either. But nobody knows her. Well, Ralph Nader. You know? Is the he most no face, huh? he's the most famous independent. Yeah, afterwards. But he had to join the Green Party. Remember? Yes. He had to be a Green Party member. And of course, Grandpa Al was Green Party, but he was just New York. Yeah, but I think I think uh, the momentum that Bernie Sanders would have by um, November of 2016, if worst case scenario. And the Democratic Party uh, blatantly fucked over Bernie Sanders. I think Bernie Sanders, if he jumped on the Green Party, could still win because of it's a hard thing because of the momentum he would have, the, mom the, the enormous momentum he would have by November. It's this possibility. Well, then you run into the Democrats who want to vote Democratic. Imbeciles. Yeah, imbeciles. Yeah, morons. Yeah. yeah, I'm telling you, the United States is a laughing stock of the world for a reason. So, uh, you, you, do you have one of those? Uh, no, 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 no. Don't go bang it up anytime. Oh, you are you almost done with that? Or are you done I'm with done that? With it. Are you done with it? So you want to bang up? Yeah. You bangy. You bangy. I bangy. Everybody bangy. No, bangy, no bangy, uh, bangy. Uh, dear A B or uh, anything. Okay. I ain't got none. All right. Any any pe yeah, people I can make fun of? I got know? Trumpy, but they're too long. Oh, that Trumpy's long. I'll well, save save it for next time. Is that possible? Billy Billy Bones. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for joining us for this week's progressive discussions. I think considering the fact that it's a Sunday uh, and uh, uh, the we perils the perils that we anticipated did not happen. Knock on Blackthorn Wood, uh, and uh, everything went well. Everything went smooth or swimmingly, mm -hmm. like the British like to say. Mm -hmm. um, it, 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 we're doing the show Sunday because Saturday I had to get my computer fixed. One of my hard drives blew, but now I have a solid state hard drive uh, in addition to the other big hard drive, and you know, it's fast, man. No moving parts. All right. All right. We are hereby signing off. We will see you next time on Progressive Discussions. Have a very safe and prosperous week. And uh, if the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman is correct, uh, get some laughs watching the... Um, Republican uh, debate this Tuesday? I believe so. This Tuesday, uh, I'm sure Donald Trump will entertain you. Uh, remember when he was... Uh, I still think that was funny. A lot of people are, 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 are very offended. Look, progressives out there, you gotta have a sense of humor, man. You gotta lighten up a little. You can't walk on eggshells progressive about uh, being afraid of offending someone you gotta lighten up I mean of course uh, mocking the disabled is 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 not nice and it's lousy of course but look at you know looking at Trump's facial expressions when he makes faces it's hilarious he makes all kinds of facial expressions mm -hmm. and when he did that I mean, come on! It, it, look, look, Donald Trump is a naturally a very entertainer, entertaining man. 
He's funny as hell. He's naturally funny. He's just, you know, he's Trump. What can I say? That's why you went on SNL. Right. Well, Christy, well, I, I never saw that one. I'm not an SNL I never fan, saw but saw with Christy either. Yeah, Christy was on it, but um, I, I, I like the fa all the fat jokes he gets hammered with. You know, I mean, uh, 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 but look, hey, Chris Christy, he sure had the holiday spirit. I mean. <laughs> He doesn't want he doesn't want the poor to have pantries, food pantries. He doesn't want them to have food stamps. He doesn't want them to have anything. Got him. Just re redirect all that food to Chris Christie's house. And the money to his cronies. That's right, his rich friends. Welfare they call it. Uh-huh. We'll see you. Bye bye. And when it goes to the military it's called warfare. Right. Okay. Warfare. Oh, and I forgot. I forgot uh -huh. to say thank you to to the man that you saw before doing promo for us, our voiceover artist William Hamilton Morrow the Third. Thank you for doing a great job, Billy Morrow. I'm sorry. I I, I, didn't, I didn't give kudos to kudos. to him Accolade. like I usually do. And. Uh, I want to give kudos to all of my dedicated uh, Facebook group administrators, all of them, collectively. And I uh, say hello to my near dear friend in Osaka, Japan, Miho. Greetings, Miho. All right. Now, do you mind if I go? No. All right, let's get the fuck out of here. All right. This has been a Mega Life 21 production.